Here we have my wonderful Frigidaire refrigerator. It's only about five years old. Made in Medico. It's legible or not. And you can see I have it pretty much emptied out. And it's actually uh, at a reasonable temperature right now. But only because it's running non stat. I've gotten the screws out of this panel. I move the ice maker. I move the rack, of course. And what I want to show you is the uh, why I take it apart is I want to show you the frost pattern. As you can see, only the bottom row of the evaporator, the first elbow and the bottom row of the uh, evaporator. Are all that are frosting up, and pretty much this fridge runs non-stop, except for uh, defrost. So it runs continuously until it defrosts, which makes all the uh, food warm up like it normally would in defrost, but it's doing it more often than it should, and it takes longer to recover than it should. So what's happened here? and I'm told it's not terribly uncommon for these refrigerators is it's got a slow Freon leak and um, the other cause that would happen would be if you know if if I had a normal frost pattern here I'd, I'd suspect there's something wrong with my defrost circuit um, that's not the case normally defrost circuit if you're, if you're trying to defrost to be other major cause of failure. That's something that can be fixed. Um, and you'd probably see frost accumulating on the uh, panel here, and the fridge would lose its temperature, but the freezer would be cold. This fridge uh, fails to make the fridge or the freezer adequately cold, cool enough. Right now, my ice cubes are nice and dry, but usually they're kind of damp and wettish. It's a uh, Barely able to hold this temperature that's holding right now. Actually, it's kind of not even cold enough right now. It was colder because we've had it open for a little bit now. This used to be a good brand, and it's still. Uh, some reports still recommends this refrigerator, but um, since they've gone to Mexico, I think their quality has gone down. This fridge used to be made, this brand used to be made like, uh, oh, less than 100 miles from here. Well, probably about 100 miles from here. A town called Greenville, Michigan. And um, Electrolux, who actually makes this refrigerator, it's not actually made by uh, Frigidaire, it's actually made by Electrolux. Um, like most refrigerators are. They moved their plant out of Michigan and moved it to Mexico. Um, this fridge was probably made two or three years after they did that. It was made in, uh, I saw on the other sticker, 1106, and I bought it probably uh, in mid-07, probably the spring of 07. And here we are at the end of 12 and it's already dead. And I've talked to several repair people and they say that it's not economical to repair. I'd basically need a refrigerator guy for a whole day. He'd have to evacuate the system, find the leak, solder the leak, um, and then repopulate the system. It would take him about a, most of a day to do that. And they also want to say that they'd probably, I'd probably need a compressor too at that point if enough moisture has gotten into the system. I'm hoping that the leak is on the high pressure side, which is what I suspect from what another technician told me. Um, so maybe I'll have a little tr uh, a little luck recharging it, but no one will service this as it's not economical to service. So it's basically scrap after five years. Okay, well after talking to a few pros, the, uh, I got the same opinion from three different people basically saying it would be, uh, 
impractical or it would cost more to fix than uh, buying a new one or the price would come so close that it would be money poorly spent. The used uh, appliance guy I talked to said one thing I could do was to get a saddle valve from an appliance store, puncture the line with a, saddle, with a piercing saddle valve, which is what I have here, and um, inject Freon on my own without meters or anything. It's kind of a guessing game. This can is a used one I had from a long time ago. There's only a little bit of Freon in here. It's a 10 ounce can. The fridge only holds four and a quarter. Um, I'd be lucky if there's still an ounce left in there. I'm hoping there's a little more than an ounce left in this can. So I'm not going to be able to fill it fully with this can, but I'm going to see see where it gets me anyway. So I bought the uh, piercing valve, and I also had to buy a conversion kit. Because uh, 134A has got uh, this type of uh, valve on it. Which is what that plastic uh, cap will snap into. Um, and the old R12 had more like this threaded tip on that one adapter you see in the middle there. Um, that's kind of like more 130, and that's what the piercing valve has. So I had to buy this for another 12 bucks. I had to buy this adapter, part of that kit, and uh, put it on. And for a little touch, I added some uh, um, gas. You know, it's basically thread tape, but for gas pipes, which I already had laying around anyway. So I put that adapter on as tight as I could by hand. Hopefully tight enough. I pushed a little gas through it, so I see it does go through. Now the way this valve works is you uh, get a tight fit over the pipe, and then you uh, pierce it with the center um, Allen key here in the, in the center. If you get these other ones all tight and get a good seal, you pierce this middle one in. All you tighten it all the way down until it stops, which is going to pierce the tube. And then you back it off two full turns to be fully open. And then to close it again, you pier you tighten it all the way down again. So I'll mount this valve. I'll uh, pierce it, I'll back it off too with the can attached, and then I'll dump what I can into the line, and um, of course I have to do the low pressure line, not the high pressure line, it's going to be the fatter tubing of the uh, tube coming out of the compressor. That would be a bad mistake, I wouldn't say a fatal mistake, but it, it would just be a See, there's a pressure valve in these cans to keep you from killing yourself. And that would split, you know, if I did hit the wrong line. So, I've been mulling around whether to try this or not, because it's pretty much going to kill the fridge. If I put this piercing valve on and it leaks, then I've pretty much killed my fridge. The other thought I had was to, well, I had that top opened up, um, panel off as I was going to maybe put a switch in that panel and make it so I could kill the defrost circuit and, and leave things as they were. It would slowly keep getting worse though, like it has been. So it would only be a temporary fix. Make things a little better on a temporary basis. So I'm going to take the big risk and kill it or not I guess here. Um, what was my other thought on that? Oh, my original, well, it's, it never really cooled that well, even when it was brand new. It never really kept ice cream that well. But it worked adequately until recently. And, uh, the ice cube maker stopped working. And I took the ice cube maker apart, and I, there's some excellent videos on the, uh, on YouTube 
about servicing your defrost circuit and your ice cube maker and all that. Um, and I did fix the defrost, defrost circuit on another refrigerator previous to this a long time ago, so I'm pretty well versed in all that. But I finally figured out there wasn't anything wrong with my ice cube maker. It was just not ever getting cold enough for the thermal switch in the ice cube maker to register as frozen to cycle the cubes. And it didn't die all at once. The cubes kept getting smaller and smaller and funkier and funkier and then it just stopped working all together. Well, that's because that's the cubes were evaporating. They were taking so long to eject. It was making so little ice and being thawed out so often. Anyway, that's about how that lies. So I think I can reinstall the ice cube maker if I get it working better. And get that working again too. Of course, you probably won't see this video if this doesn't work, so I am guess I'm going to try this. I'm going to clean off a little section of tube and pierce it. Okay, I've got the fridge unplugged because it just went through a defrost cycle. And now it just started running again, so I got the plug ready to go. Unplugged it, but it's almost ready to plug it in. While it was going through defrost, I mounted the piercing valve. I've done everything but tighten the center screw as a piercing screw. So that's the big moment of truth. Um, so I uh, unplugged the fridge. I guess I'm going to go for it. So I th uh, found the instructions. Which I'd lost because I've had them around for a while. And you have to put both pieces together until the two halves meet. There's no gap. I can't get my fingernail in there anymore. So I got that firmly on. My adapter on top of that. This cap came with the adapter. And I'll be ready to go. I think I'm going to warm the can slightly. I'll probably plug the fridge back on. Um, let the uh, compressor's vacuum help suck the can dry, I hope. Not a whole lot in this can, but we'll see if it makes any difference at all. Well, I didn't uh, turn the refrigerator on yet. It uh, filled readily without turning it on, so we, I wanted to be able to hear if anything was leaking or anything. Um, I dumped what little was left in this can. Hopefully it's going to make a difference. Basically, you crank this valve all the way in, and then you back it off one turn. Two turns max, they say, but one turn is good enough to open the valve again, with this already plugged into the top, it was snapped in and everything. And this can, you just pull the trigger, it's got like a safety on it, you rotate this little safety and then you pull the trigger to shoot the freon out. There's still a little pressure in there, but most of, the, most of the fluid's gone now. If you shake it, there's no, no fluid shaking in there, and there was, wasn't much in there, but hopefully I got an ounce or more in here. Which will make the fridge work better. I still won't be up to capacity. I don't have the gauges, of course, and all that good stuff to really do it right. You can go by the frost pattern, though. If I uh, can get that frost pattern to creep up, you know, further, and uh, I'll know I have it right if I get that frost pattern just about totally frosted. So I'll probably have to buy another can, but right now it's uh, winter and uh, the automotive stores aren't stocking their Freon. And this is the same type they use in the automotive. It says right in the sticker in the refrigerator, 134A. So, and that's, you know, it's easy to get. You don't need a license for 134A. It also has leak sealer in it. I don't know if it's going to do me good or not, but maybe... In a perfect world. Well, I had dumped the rest of this can in, in here. It's something I had laying around from actually the car before the car I got now. It was only maybe an ounce in here. I was in guesstimating. Dumped it in, and it still worked after I was done. So I figured, oh, good. At least I didn't break it. Well, then that evening, uh, the, fr the uh, temperature started climbing in the fridge. It wasn't going down any further. 
It wasn't really climbing fast, but it wasn't going down. It wasn't down to where it should have been. So I ended up unplugging the thing and emptying it out, and putting all what's left of my refrigerated food. Well, luckily, I had my freezer food all used up. Put my refrigerated food out in the uh, sun porch. Stay a little bit cooler, being it's November or uh, <laughs> being it's December. Um, so I finally went let it sit for a week. I was thinking, well, maybe the stop seal will keep leaking out and uh, maybe seal it. And maybe, uh, maybe just the inlet iced up on the compressor. You know, maybe this, maybe that. It's looking pretty hopeless. But I went ahead and bought a can anyway. And there's about um, 11 ounces of Freon in these cans. Uh-oh, it's leaking out. I'm going to put this thing outside. Shoot. I'm going to be able to save this can. Put about half this can in, which is too much, probably. The refrigerator only holds 4 ounces. This can has like 11 ounces of Freon and uh, an ounce or so of uh, oil stop leak. So now I dumped that in and uh, probably a little too much. As you see, the uh, I was looking at the frost pattern in the inside refrigerator. It hasn't been running long enough to get a frost pattern. But I'm getting frost all the way back out on my return line here. Which means I'm probably a little bit overfilled. And she's cooling inside. The compressor definitely sounded different when it first started up. <laughs> so I've probably overfilled her slightly. And I'm going to uh, let it run for a little bit and then I'm going to unplug it. Let it sit for a couple days because I'm going to be gone anyway. And see what I got when I come back. See if this uh, holds its charge. It can't hold a charge for two days. I'm definitely not going to put any food in it. If it holds its charge, then I'm going to purge the uh, water that's been stuck in this water line for a while now for the ice maker. Get some fresh water in there and reinstall the ice maker and uh, have a go at running her. So we'll see. That's the update at the moment, though. An hour later, it's frosting up and back here quite well, which is probably not really supposed to do that much. We don't see any stains on the cardboard from whatever frosting up. Which probably would be at this rate. At any rate, um, so it's probably overfilled a little bit. Which, uh, really the biggest problem with that is going to be efficiency. And I'm down to uh, under a real nice cold temperature well, for not very much time. It hasn't been running very long, so there's not a real obvious frost pattern. Um, I can see it by looking at it. Um, but actually, it doesn't really indicate that it's overfilled that grossly to me. When they're super overfilled, then the, uh, you won't get any frost in the first bend of the uh, high pressure line. I'm getting a little iciness here. So it's not super grossly overfilled. And being overfilled a little bit is going to be to my advantage in this case. First thought I should have done is used some kind of gauge in a better setup. And lacking gauges, I should have tried to put it in little by little. Which actually I did, but uh, I had trouble getting it to flow at all. And when I did get the flow, I guess I overdid it. So that's a little on me. I should have put in like just a little. Once I knew it was flowing, I should have gone just a little bit and then retested. And anyway, I'm not that far off. And being overfilled a little bit is going to be good because if I do have a real small leak in this thing, then uh, it's a chance for hopefully this leak stop to fill that little tiny micro leak. And then. Uh, by then my pressure will probably be even a little lower than it is now. This was already down here except I've had it open for a while now. So it's cool. I'm going to leave it unplugged for a couple days while I'm gone. And then I'm going to uh, plug it in again and uh, let it run and uh, let it freeze water for a couple days. Make sure it's um, going to work for me and then I guess I'll restock with food and, well, put the ice maker back in and then restock it with food. 
I really like to get the ice maker working again. Didn't think I wanted an ice maker in a fridge, but it turned out to be quite a convenience. Of course, I work outdoors, so I use a lot of ice. Well, I started cleaning this thing out, and I realized it's actually not as bad as I thought to clean. All the shelves just come out, and I was just doing them in the sink with the dishwasher thing, but I realized... What I realized is either just take it to the bathroom, I got a washer thing in the bathroom too, and I can just pull everything out. And a lot easier to work out, a lot less messy to work out in here too. Found the schematic tucked in a little pocket right under here. My fingertips in it right now. A little plastic pocket just stuck to the bottom here. All right, the um, ice maker wasn't working when the refrigerator wasn't working well enough. I wasn't getting cold enough to trigger the thermostat in the ice maker. I think it's all wrong with it. So I'm going to reinstall the ice maker. Before I do that, I think I've uh, using that schematic. I believe I've identified the hot and the um, lead to the wa uh, water valve and back and I'm going to put this uh, lamp that's illumin illuminating things right now in series with these two clips and uh, turn the lamp off plug the refrigerator in when I turn the lamp on it should activate the valve and let me flush the uh, water out for a little bit here I have the water doesn't run for several weeks so I want to get the stale water out of the filter and lines and it's a good thing I did this method because uh, I got it wrong the first time that's why I was drawing so much current now I can turn the switch on the big mistake I made is assuming the color code on the uh, ice maker is the same as the color code in the refrigerator which apparently it isn't I did find a listing in the guide though so right now I'm just flowing water into the tray here I want to give it a good flush I'm using the switch on the uh, on the light to turn that valve on and off. This lets me keep my distance too. That's why I did it this way. In case I screwed up, which I did. So it's a good thing I hit the light bulb to break the current. All right, this is an update. Things are working pretty well. Um, ice maker is pretty good. Her chunking. I heard it go a few times last night. I don't got more ice. So anyway, I won't be needing the uh, manual ice tray anymore. Yeah, temperature is good. I she turned it down a little last night. So, I'll see if it holds up and probably be loading up with food pretty soon.